What's going on everybody? Rico here, Feds and Flips. Um, I haven't got to the point yet where I'm taking video while I am sourcing at yard sales, thrift stores, things like that. Um, but I want to do these after effect, uh, after the uh, after the fact, not after the effect, after the fact video. So I just got back from an estate sale um, that I saw advertised. The one big thing that I saw in their advertisement I had first dibs on. It was a Miyama C33C or something like that pro camera. Um, comps on it that I saw selling on eBay were right around four hundred dollars. Between I think it was four four fifty. So I saw that was hoping for a great price, uh, and that was like that was the big thing I want to look at. And then anything else would have been extra. Um, I got first dibs on it. Walking through the door, there were a ton of people there. I mean, there were probably like two or three dozen people that actually uh, were there as soon as the doors opened. Um, but they had that camera marked above current ask. Um, they had $500 on it. Not touching that. There's no way. I mean, even if I was a collector and was looking for some old cameras for whatever reason, uh, I wouldn't pay full price like that. Now, it's an estate sale. Um, Day two, they go to 25% off. Day three, they go to 50% off. But even at 50% off, $250 for that camera is, it's, yes, there's still money to be made in it, but I'm not sure how long I would have to sit on it. So 250 is too much of an investment for me for one item, not knowing how quickly it would move. If I end up getting 450 for it and it's a $200 profit, that'd be great. But again, I don't want to sit on it for, you know, a week, two weeks, six weeks, a month, three months, five months, whatever the case is, you don't know. There, there's, it, it's, it's a rare item, so it's hard to gauge how quickly it's going to move. Um, they were taking bids on any items listed or selling at over a hundred dollars, so I left a bid. Um, I'm going to have to either message them on social media or call them because I forgot to leave my phone number on the bid. I left my name. Um, but I don't expect it. So I lowballed bid at $100. If I can get that camera for 100 bucks, I'll buy it uh, for sure. Because again, um, if I can get anything over 300 to make a $200 profit, uh, it would be great. And um, at that point, it would be worth it for me. A $100 investment for one item is not as bad as uh, $250 or, or north. So that being said, I did get a few other items. And uh, didn't leave empty-handed, so let's check those out. All right, so um, let's go over some of the keeper stuff that I got first. Picked up a couple of uh, Hallmark Christmas ornaments. Um, these I bought because they're keepers. Um, I did a quick comp on a couple of Hallmark. They had a whole bunch of Christmas stuff, a whole table full. Um, it was one of those ones, you know, if you get their 50% off deal and they're willing to make offers, I would definitely throw out a price for all the ornaments they had if they still have like the basket um but that being said i had a couple that i paid 10 bucks each for that i'm keeping this one a uh, little military defending the flag ornament uh, which is really nice i didn't really... probably should have pulled these out make sure but it's it's in there they're in it's in good shape Little cards in there, definitely uh, well taken care of by the previous owner. Another one, G.I. Joe Action Soldier, 35th anniversary ornament. Pretty cool little guy there. Both of these will probably end up going on my mini Christmas tree, or they might go on the big tree um, this Christmas. Those those two are keepers. Um, that was twenty bucks. Uh, probably, f uh, I w definitely uh, full value of what I paid, what they're worth. Um, my wife being a really big gym addict, I had to pick up a Peanuts gym themed tie for. Because no pain, no gain. I, I don't know. I have no. Again, this is going to be a keeper. Paid four dollars for this. No idea how much it's worth. Probably at least four dollars. Uh, and then 
my wife, and I guess me. We collect cardinals. So I picked up a coaster set of cardinals for $4 ceramic set. This is pretty cool. Um, probably could be used a little bit of a wipe down and cleaned up a little bit. Uh, again, no idea how much these are worth because these are keepers. So those items were purchased as keepers. These are intended for resale. So uh, Phoenix Resales, I've seen him pick up these handheld games quite often. And uh, I think it was Phoenix Resale. No, not Phoenix Resales. Um, Retro, Retro Rick, maybe. But I got two Mattel Electronics handheld games, football, baseball. Um, paid four bucks each, so eight dollars for the two, and I think I can get at least twenty bucks out of them. So about twelve dollar profit. That's after shipping and everything, um, after fees. Uh, don't know if they work. Both of them are in really good condition as far as the uh, the games themselves. Battery compartments are clean. They do have some etching on them where the previous owner, a previous owner, etched their name on there, which kind of sucks, but. Um, you know, I still think if I could list these, probably list them for like $25, $30 and try to get at least 20 best offer on them. Uh, I do have a nine volt battery running around somewhere. I'll toss in and test because if they work, um, obviously they should get full value. Um, bunch of books. Took a shot on these. I ran comps. These were like two bucks each, uh, grim fairy tales, but they're really, really old. Again, some name writing on the uh, on the books themselves. So you know, the per previous owner name on here, which I don't think a lot of people expect that with old books. Um, I got to double check the dates on these. I want to say they're pretty old. It's just a matter of figuring out exactly how old. But um, Grim Fairy Tales, this is a Junior Deluxe Editions. Um, I want to say Double Day. I think I looked it up. Uh, illustrated. Uh, where is it? Junior Deluxe Editions, Garden City, New York. Um, Nelson Double Day book. So Grimm's Fairy Tales. I grabbed that one first, and then I saw that they had some others, and this one kind of caught my eye and was the reason. And I ran comps again, and it's they're, they're kind of a little bit all over the place. I've got to look at them a little bit better. Um, I was doing things a little bit on the fly. So this one's copyright 1944, original 1900, but this one's yes, copyright 1944, Wizard of Oz. Um, and then it's basically a whole set. So Anderson's Fairy Tales. East of the Sun and West Moon. Um, and then, yeah, it's four. So it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight books total. Um, two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen, sixteen dollars. I think I paid for all of these. And um, I guess that the comps were all over the place, anywhere from twenty to fifty. I think I saw. So. Um, there should be a little bit of money to make the, on these. The good thing is if I sell them as a full set, um, I can ship them media mail. So it'll take a little, and I'll put that in the description, um, of the, of the post on eBay. Um, so I can ship them for really, really cheap. It shouldn't cost me more than like four or $5 to ship this. Uh, so, you know, maybe it's a, maybe I listed at 30, 30, 35 free shipping type of thing. Um... The other thing that I purchased that this is the first time purchasing a bigger electronic piece. I saw this in the photo. I was curious on how much they would ask for it. And I ended up grabbing it. It's heavy. Um, I don't know why I grabbed it. I mean, I know I why because the comps on this are pretty high. So this is a Panasonic um, Omnivision PV1220 VCR top load plugged it in powers on opens up i'm pretty sure it works comes with the manual and the wired remote so i think between these two i can probably list this thing at 
the comps I saw were selling for at least sixty dollars um, all the way up with the manual and the 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 little remote here. I might list that at one fifty plus shipping and entertain offers. Uh, and it is heavy, so shipping on it, I'm probably gonna push out at like forty. Uh, 30 40 dollars to ship because it's it's a brick um, but I think there's a good I paid 12 bucks for this so I think there's a really good profit margin on here I mean I could sell this at a hundred dollars free shipping and I'd make money off of it not as much but I would definitely make money on it but this is an old school I want to I get to take a picture of this and send it to my mom because I'm pretty sure we had this exact VCR at some point in time when I was growing up um, but really cool vintage find uh and everything that i got today basically falls in that vintage world um, both of these are 90s these look pretty old on uh, the time not sure the, the the two handheld games definitely 80s um 80 style game i want to say 19 or 1978 yeah so not too not too far off the books definitely old and then the one thing that gets me every time i go to a freaking estate sale or a yard sale hat um they're slow to move a lot of times, but the profit margins are great. So typically, I try not. To, I typically try to get hats at a dollar. Um, I'll push into the two dollar range if it's, you know, a decent material. Fixing my rug down there. Sorry. Um, if I go above two dollars, there's got to be pretty good subject matter, and I paid four dollars for some of these hats, two dollars for some of these hats, um, but I think they're worth it. And I think I'm going to make money. I think I'm going to sell every one of these at least $25 uh, or more. Um, because they're all vintage. So first one, Department of Justice, Federal Bureau of Prisons hat. Tag is pretty beat up on it. Um, but it is a made in the USA tag. Nice vintage Bureau of Prisons hat. I think it's going to do really well. Army, West Point, corduroy style hat. Made in the USA. Tag, again, I mean, these are all used. The tag is not in the best of conditions. Um, but the insides are, are not bad as well. But vintage Army West Point hat. Another Army West Point hat. Auto. This one's made in Taiwan. But um, I know it's old because everything in that house was old. Um, so, eh. Army Black Knights hat. This one needs to be cleaned up a little bit. Um, tag has been removed. I'm not sure the age, but pretty sure it's got some age to it. It's for the all embroidered. Um, this one might be one of the lower end one sales because it's just it's Army Black Knights, but there's nothing that really yells vintage on it. Um, same thing with this one. I mean, this one is. Those will probably be definitely the twenty twenty five dollar range. Um, Army football, John Hancock Sun Bowl, nineteen eighty eight, buckle back. Made in the USA tag. And then a United States probation officer vintage trucker hat. Um, Fort Lauderdale, made in the USA tag. So, you know, one, two, three, four, five. Ended up buying six hats to go into my collection of hats that I'm selling. Um, two, yeah, so hopefully it'll be a good score there. Um, so that's everything I got. And, uh, you know, keep an eye out on videos or on my Buy Me a Coffee page, and you'll see updates on things when they sell and how much I actually end up making on so thanks for watching like subscribe if you haven't already and good luck on your flips and your scores out there